Good morning and welcome to our adult Bibles uh, study or Sunday school lesson for June 21st at New Bethel Baptist Church. Our lesson today is entitled Compassion Demonstrated. We're taking a look at the passage from Proverbs chapter 3 verses 21 through 35. First, I ought to say Happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. Um, I hope you have a wonderful day. And as you apply the lesson that we're going to be talking about today, I'm sure it'll help you to have a wonderful year ahead. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and discipline. That was the key verse for the study in the book of Proverbs. We looked at that a couple weeks ago. And uh, I think it applies to the lesson that we're looking at today. Uh, when we live a lifestyle, walking with the Lord, uh, walking with Him and, and enjoying God, it will help us to be wise. Uh, we will not be perfect, uh, but it will help us to be blessed. Uh, we will be blessed if we walk with the Lord. We won't have a perfect life, but our lives will be blessed by God. The lesson today is entitled, Compassion Demonstrated. Uh, the subtitle is, Following God's Wisdom is Demonstrated in How a Person Treats Others. The first section is entitled, Confidence Gained, verses 21 through 26. The better we know God, the more confident we will be in Him, or more confidence we'll have in Him. The second section, entitled Kindness Expressed, verses 27 through 30, talk about how we should be copying God's kindness in our lives so we show others kindness, just as God has shown us kindness in so many ways. The third section, uh, Blessings Secured, verses 31 through 35, will talk about the result of walking with God. So starting off, confidence gained. Verse 21 and 22 says, My child, don't lose sight of common sense and discernment. Hang on to them, for they will refresh your soul. They are like jewels on a necklace. Some translations would translate that uh, wisdom and discretion rather than common sense and discernment, or sound judgment and discernment. I kind of like the uh, the New Living Translation that says common sense because there seems to be such a lack of common sense in our society today. And uh, largely that's due part to the fact that people don't know the Lord. So they don't have common sense. They don't use wisdom in their lives. Uh, this is strategic instruction for children. So as parents, we need to be teaching our children uh, to have common sense and discernment, or wisdom and, and uh, discretion or discernment. Uh, not only did Solomon teach this for his children, but God wants us to do the same. It's also essential for adults to practice uh, common sense and discernment. We need to be practicing that in our lives as well. So it's a good lesson for us. Knowing God, walking with Him, uh, will help to instill wisdom in our life. Wisdom. I mentioned earlier, I think last week or maybe the week before, that you can substitute the word Christ for the word wisdom throughout the book of Proverbs. Because really, Christ is the wisdom of God. We read that in 1 Corinthians 1.24. But to those whom God has called, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. So gaining wisdom is knowing Christ, walking with him. Uh, common sense and discernment then could be uh, called uh, walking with Christ or walking with God. Uh, walking with him in our lives will help us to gain wisdom or common sense. Then the verse goes on to say, hang on to them. In other words, um, 
keep on keeping on. Uh, don't quit. Keep using common sense. Uh, keep looking for wisdom and discernment in your life. Make this a, a lifestyle. Don't just do it once in a while, but make it a lifestyle to be walking with the Lord. I, it reminds me of uh, Proverbs, or I'm sorry, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 7. Actually, in that passage, you go back to the previous chapter even, and it talks about obeying the commands of God. And as parents, we need to do that. We need to be obeying God's commands. And then in verse 7 of chapter 6, God says, impress them on your children. Or other translations would say, teach them diligently to your children. In other words, teaching the commands of God, the, the word of God to our children is not just something we do haphazardly, but it's something we need to really put a lot of emphasis on. Uh, we need to impress on our children or to diligently teach them God's word. And so we too should be living by the word of God. If we're not living the word of God ourselves, it's going to be hard to teach our children the word of God. These verses also talk about common sense or dis and discernment as being refreshing. Kind of like if you've been out working real hard and, and you take a break, you sit down, have a glass, a cold glass of water, and it, it can be refreshing. Well, so common sense and discernment can be refreshing in life. I know it's refreshing to me to hear people using common sense rather than uh, some of the foolish things that we see going on around us in life. The verse also talks about it being like jewels. Common sense and discernment are like jewels. They're very valuable. Valuable in our lives. Valuable in the lives of our children. That's why we're to teach our children just as Solomon was teaching his son to be uh, wise and to use common sense and discernment. In a way, it's like having a necklace, this verse says. It, it's uh, A necklace is seen by everybody. Uh, I mean, if you're wearing a necklace, others will see it. And really, wisdom expressed through our lives uh, will be seen by other people. They'll be able to see the fact that we have common sense and discernment. Verse 23 says, they keep you safe on your way, and your feet will not stumble. The result of common sense and discernment, or wisdom and discretion, is to keep you safe. Uh, they'll protect you in, in life. They'll keep your feet from stumbling. You won't stumble into sin if you are walking with the Lord, if you're practicing wisdom or common sense. It'll help to keep you out of sin. It'll help you to avoid those things in life that will cause you problems if you're walking with God. And it helps us to experience the abundant life that God has planned for us. God wants us to live life to the fullest. And he has that planned out. He has it all charted out for us if we'll follow him. So walking with God will give us wisdom to experience the great plan that God has for us in life. Verse 24 says, you can go to bed without fear. You will lie down and sleep soundly. I like a couple of the phrases that were in the uh, lesson book uh, for this lesson. One was, weariness nudges us to go to bed, but anxiety may prevent us from going to sleep. I, I'm sure you've experienced times like, you know, in the evening you're tired and you're just weary and you want to go to bed and get some rest. And then you lay there and you think about something, some anxiety, something that you're worried about rather than trusting God. If we trust God, uh, he will help us to have good night's sleep. I know that's Harder done than uh, said. It's easy to say it. Uh, there was another statement in the book that said, trust in God 
allows us to lie down with peace instead of fret. And I thought, ooh, I need that. That is good. Uh, we can lie down in peace, not fret. And we don't have to fret and worry if we turn our concerns over to the Lord. And these are some of the benefits of walking with God. Remember walking with God uh, that we talked about in verse 7. Really, the fear of the Lord is walking with the Lord, walking with God. And uh, the result of that is being able to sleep well. In verse 25, we read, You need not be afraid of sudden disaster or destruction that comes upon the wicked. The wicked are going to be judged. Uh, sometimes uh, they meet with sudden disaster. A wicked life will result in disaster even in this life. Uh, sometimes uh, the wicked seem to just go on and nothing ever happens to them. But they will one day have to stand before God in judgment. But we don't have to worry about judgment like the wicked do if we're walking with the Lord. Romans chapter 8 verse 28 says, When we know that, it, and we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. That's a neat verse, isn't it? And I'm sure you as well as myself, we, we rely on that many times. We go back to that verse and, and uh, reflect on it in our lives, knowing that God will bring about everything that is good for us in our life. Uh, he wants us to experience good, and uh, he provides for us in a way that will provide good for our lives, things that are the best for us. Even when we have difficulty, we know that it's passed through God's hands first. And he sees how it's going to benefit us. And so we can trust the Lord that everything that happens in our life is for our good. Ultimately, it's for our good. And then verses uh, 37 and following, it says, No, uh, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels or demons, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Isn't that neat? Nothing can separate us from the love of God. He has a great love for us, and he wants to see that take place in our lives. He wants to uh, show his love to us. So we don't have to be uh, concerned about disaster or destruction that come to the wicked when we walk with the Lord. Verse 26 says, For the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being snared. We have a lot of confidence in God if we're walking with him. As we get to know the Lord, our confidence in God grows. As we uh, continue to walk with him, we continue to trust him more and more. Uh, we realize that he is looking out for our good. In Jeremiah, we read, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Wow, what a promise. Isn't that neat that God has that kind of a plan all laid out for us? This is the benefit of walking with the Lord. We are blessed to be able to uh, walk with God. And through that, he will add to our life. He will give us wisdom uh, to face each day. This brings us to our next point in our lesson. Kindness Express verses uh, 27 through 30. Walking with God has a lot of benefits and uh, it teaches us to express kindness toward other people. Uh, common sense or wisdom and discernment lead us to being kind toward other people. 
uh, is just common sense to be kind toward other people. If, we're, if we express kindness to others, they in turn will express kindness to us. This section gives us a lot of examples and how to be kind. Actually, there are four different examples that are shown here. Godly response uh, toward others is what God wants us to do. He wants us to express kindness, just as he is kind toward us. He wants us to express that toward other people. Remember the great commandment? Uh, when Jesus was asked, what is the greatest of the commandments? He said, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind. And the second is like it, to love your neighbor as yourself. So this kindness, expressing kindness is uh, the second part of that great commandment that the Lord has given to us. Verse 27, we read in 28, uh, do not withhold good from those who deserve it when it is in your power to help them. If you can help your neighbor now, don't say, come back tomorrow, and then I'll help you. Uh, there are four examples in this passage of kindness or justice versus injustice uh, that uh, Solomon is going to share with his son. Uh, how to be just toward someone or kind toward them, or how not to be unjust. Um, first, he says, Pay what you owe. When you owe somebody something, pay it. Uh, don't delay, pay it. Now, I think this is related, this can relate in our lives when we owe something to someone. If we hire somebody to do a job, then it's our responsibility to pay them. Uh, we need to pay up what we owe. Uh, don't withhold when it's within your power to pay it. And then the second part is, don't delay justice or kindness. Uh, if you are prompted to do something kind for somebody, do it. Don't wait. If you wait, you may lose the opportunity. Now, back in the day when this was written, people probably uh, went to work and got paid that day because with that money, then they could go and buy the food that they needed to eat for that day. They didn't have a lot of surplus backed up like we have in our cupboards, uh, but they would get paid on the day that they worked and then they would buy the supplies that they needed to be able to feed their family for that day. And so the, the idea here was don't tell your workers, well, I'll come back tomorrow and I'll pay you because then they're going to go hungry uh, that night. So pay it up as as you owe it. Verses 29 and 30, we read, Don't plot harm against your neighbor, for those who live nearby trust you. Don't pick a fight without reason when no one has done you harm. So the third example is don't harm your neighbor. That's a way to show kindness. Don't harm your neighbor. Uh, do good to your neighbor. That's just common sense, isn't it? Uh, they're going to live by you. And if you're harassing them or speaking bad about them, they're not going to be a good neighbor. It's great to have good neighbors. Uh, if you have good neighbors, it's something to be thankful for. Remember the story Jesus told about the Good Samaritan? Well, the idea of that whole story was to help people understand what a good neighbor was. It's a person that does kindness to others, even those that may not have been uh, favorably looked upon in their society. It was a Samaritan that was kind to a Jew, and they, they, they were like enemies to each other, and yet he was kind to him. In your lesson book on page 32, there's a chart about good neighbors, bad neighbors in uh, the book of Proverbs and what Proverbs teaches about, you know, how to be a bad neighbor or a good neighbor. Uh, when you look at that, you can see the, the kind of characteristics that make for a good neighbor. Good neighbors will help each other. They want to look out for one another. Uh, you can trust your good neighbor, a neighbor that's next to you. You may want to trust them. And then the second or the fourth, the second part of this passage, the fourth uh, example 
is don't be a troublemaker. Uh, don't pick fights without reason. Um, show kindness uh, to your neighbor. Don't be a troublemaker. If you're uh, talking bad about people, uh, if you're not being kind to others, it really shows that you're not walking with God. If you want to demonstrate to the world that you're walking with the Lord, then show kindness uh, to your neighbor or to others, and that'll show that you are walking with the Lord. This brings us to the third part of our lesson for today. Blessing secured, uh, verses 31 through 35. The first two verses we read, don't envy violent people or copy their ways. Such wicked people are detestable to the Lord, but he offers his kindness to the godly. I guess we'd have to say, um, verses really saying, be careful who your heroes are. The heroes of the world should not be the heroes of saints. We should be living differently than the world. The world may uh, put up before them violent people or people that live a sinful life as their heroes. But those are not the kind of people that should be heroes of ours if we are believers. Uh, remember in Romans we talked about in chapter 12 about being transformed. Our lives should be different. We shouldn't be conformed to the world. Uh, our lives should be different than that. Uh, I don't know if you've ever been around someone that uh, gave a quick response to somebody that made an accusation or said something, and you may have thought, boy, I wish I could uh, think quick like that and respond uh, to other people when they make nasty comments. But let me ask you, was the response helpful to the person that was being responded to you know we have to um, use wisdom and discernment uh, in our response to people and it may mean that we're not real fast to respond you know our response should edify and build up the other person if it's just a, a quick response that tears down the person or kind of justifies uh, yourself well, that's not the kind of response that's going to help to build them up and encourage them. So being transformed, uh, not being conformed to the ways of the world, are really important for us. We should not envy or try to copy the ways of the world or have those kind of people as heroes of ours. Uh, rather, focus on being people of God, being the kind of people that Others will look at us and see that, well, we're different. And they'll want to know what makes us different. It's because we have the peace of God in our lives, because we're walking with him. What is God's perspective about our response and, our, and the people that we um, come in contact with? How, how does God respond to our life. Isn't that what really matters? It's not what other people think about us. It's what God thinks about us that really matters. Violent people are described here in this verse as wicked and detestable to God. <laughs> I don't want to be considered that way to God. I don't want to be considered as wicked and detestable. Uh, God offers friendship to the godly. I'd much rather be in that camp to be a friend with God. Which kind do we want to be? Do we want to be a friend of God or do we want to be detested by the Lord? Verse 33 we read, the Lord curses the house of the wicked, but he blesses the home of the upright. A choice needs to be made by us. Do we want to be wise or foolish? The wise walk with God and they're going to be blessed by God. The foolish, they deny God. Uh, they deny his ways and they're going to be cursed by God. 
So it makes a lot of common sense that we should want to be blessed by God, not cursed by God. Knowing God helps us to make a clear choice in life, doesn't it? It's real easy when you really know the Lord and you're walking with God to want to be blessed by him and not cursed by him. Walking with God secures blessings. Verse 34, we read, The Lord mocks the mocker, but is gracious to the humble. The wise inherit honor, but fools are put to shame. Here we get some more guidance about walking with the Lord. Um, being mocked by God or receiving his blessing. There's the choice. The wise inherit honor and the fools are put to shame. Which do you want to choose? That's the choice that's before us. Do we want to walk with the Lord or do we want to be put to shame? That's really kind of the essence of the lesson, isn't it? Are we walking with God or are we choosing to be fools and go our own self-centered ways? This brings us to the application. Now, we've been talking about application all the way through the lesson. Um, but really, we can sum it up in saying that when we know God and his word, the choice becomes obvious. Uh, and we don't want to be cursed by the Lord. We want to be blessed by him. Uh, does this... All this talk about the blessing of the Lord and the benefits of walking with God, doesn't it encourage you to walk with the Lord? How about encouraging us to share God's plan with others? You know, like with our children or with our relatives and our friends and the people we work with. Uh, it should help us to want to, uh, in, it should encourage us to help us to want to share God's plan with them so that they too can have the blessings of the Lord. Let's share God with our world by being compassionate, by showing kindness to the people around us. That will attract others to the Lord. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, as we've considered this passage, we see that uh, your plan for us is to have common sense and discernment in life, to show kindness to others, compassion to others around us, because those are characteristics of you. And we want to imitate you in our lives. Help us to be attractive uh, to other people, to attract them to God, to you, uh, that by the way we live, that they will see that you are kind and compassionate. And they'll see that through our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, let me uh, share a few reminders for you. Um, our service today at the church is going to be held at 11 o'clock. It'll also be online if you, for some reason, cannot uh, attend the service. Uh, plan to uh, be online with us again next week for our Sunday school lesson. Uh, we'll have it online again next week. Don't forget to read through the book of Proverbs. You know, reading the chapter that corresponds with the date. Just before I did this recording, I read through the chapter for today. Uh, I'm trying to keep up with that as well. Uh, and then I encourage you to pray for one another. You might take the church directory and just run through it or take a page a day or whatever and just pray for one another. Well, happy Father's Day. And uh, for all you dads, I hope you have a wonderful day. Enjoy the day and as you live out these things, you'll have a wonderful year ahead. God bless you.